what's up guys welcome back to another live stream today we're going to be diving into genesis chapter 30 verses 1 to 8 genesis chapter 30 verses 1 to 8 bear with me one second because we are still going from i want to make sure um uh, we're still in genesis chapter 29 verses 31 i gotta i gotta take that hold on one second We're still studying Genesis chapter. Um, let me just make sure. Uh, all right. Yeah, we still study in Genesis chapter 29, verse 31 to chapter 30, verse 24. In this live stream, you'll learn about the principles of interpretation, how to use the life application study Bible, and how to do online Bible study. I want you to take this opportunity to Bible study Genesis chapter um, 30, verses 1 to 8, from my own personal perspective. Just trying to make a difference. Okay. Um, from my own personal perspective, be sure to join in by getting help as you um, study this important passage of the Bible by asking questions and um, getting help as you study this. Okay. We're coming with more live streams like this every day at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you won't miss out on future studies. Um, I'm still trying to get to 8,000. So help a brother out. I hope you do. So again, guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this intriguing video, this intriguing live stream, we dive into the profound biblical passage of Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 to 8. Join us as we unravel the web, the web of tension, envy, and jealousy that is evident in the life of Rachel. And Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 to 8 captures a pivotal moment in Rachel's journey where um, her desire for children clashes with her sister's her sister Leah's fruitful womb. We analyze the un, the underlying emotion of envy and jealousy that Rachel wrestles with, shedding light on the complexities of human nature depicted in this ancient text. Through careful examination and insight commentary, we aim to um, illuminate the powerful theme and message conveyed within Genesis chapter 30, verses one to eight. Discover how this scripture transcend time, offering valuable lessons and reflections on envy and jealousy that remains relevant in our modern lives. By exploring Rachel's struggle and witnessing the manifestation of tension, envy, and jealousy, we gain a deeper understanding of the universal human experience. This thought-provoking study encourages self-reflection empathy and personal growth join us on this enlightening journey through genesis chapter 30 verses 1 to 8 as we uncover the intricate dynamics of tension and the destructive nature of envy and jealousy through our in-depth analysis we aim to provide valuable insight and foster meaningful discussions among our viewers subscribe to our channel now and ensure that you don't you don't miss out on this captivating exploration of genesis chapter 30 verses 1 to 8 and all the other series that comes with it engage with the fellow view viewers in the comment section below to share your thoughts and reflections and personal experience related to tension envy and jealousy stay tuned for more engaging content scholarly insight and inspiring discussion thank you for watching this live stream and supporting our channel. God bless you. Bear with me one second, guys, before we move any further, I wanna grab something real quick. Okay, good. All right. I had the, there was a certain part that I wanted to, that I needed to save for my other ones. Okay. 
Sorry, guys, I just wanted to get that. So um, let's get to our creed and then we'll get to comments. Y'all ready? Let's go. The creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Celestial Church of Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And we all say, Amen. Okay, guys, so while you guys are, are typing your amens out, let's go to the comments and see who everybody's here. Also, open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 30, and we'll start from verse 1, and we'll read down to verse 8. Michael Dunbar is on scene. He says, good evening, everyone. Good evening, brothers and sisters. How was your day? Hope it was wonderful and blessed. Thank you, Michael, for your comments. Also, Marissa is on scene. She says, good evening, brothers and sisters. How has everybody's day been? Um, hope it's been wonderful and blessed. It was Marissa and Michael. Thank you very much for your comments. And my boy Brian is back with another live stream and he says, hi, what's up, Brian? How's it going, brother? I'm glad to see you're back here. So guys, let's, so, so let's go, let's, let's dive into this baby. Y'all ready? Hold on. Let me get to my, let me get to the, get to the list. So what I did was I put together, um, I put together um, some cross references so we can get a better understanding of where we where we're coming from. So if we can open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter before we get into that, yeah, before we actually read the scriptures, let's go back and let's look at some cross references. Okay. Oh, Marissa has some some scriptures as well. I'll look at hers afterwards. Uh, let me see. Okay, I think. Okay, yeah, we could look at some scriptures. So let's look at let's look at some of my scriptures that I cross reference for you guys to give you some some backstory a little bit. If we go over to First Samuel, chapter one, verse five to six. First Samuel, chapter one, verse five to six says, "And through he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion, uh, only one choice portion, because the Lord had given her no children." Okay. Also, if we go to Genesis chapter 20, verse 18. Genesis chapter 20, verse 18 tells us this. For the Lord has, has caused all the women to be infertile because of what happened with Abraham's wife. So we see that. And if we go over to Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. It says, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children. But Rachel could not conceive. We see that. Also, if we go to Genesis chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. Genesis chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. And it says, So Sarah said to Abraham, Abram, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarah's proposal. So Sarah ate. Abram's wife took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarah, with, Tris, Sarah, with contempt. We see that. Also, if we go to Genesis chapter 30, verse 23. Genesis chapter 30, verse 23 tells us what? She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. God has removed my disgrace, she said. So we know that this is about. Also, if we look at Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28 tells us what? Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Amen. 
So having, having that in mind, let's open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter, Marissa and Michael says, amen, to the reading of the creed. Marissa says, amen, recognizing the reading of the creed. And Michael says, amen, recognizing the reading of the creed. So if we open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter 30, verse 1 to 8. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 1 to 8, and it reads, When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children for Jacob, she became jealous of her sister. She pled with Jacob, give me, give me children or I'll die. Then Jacob became furious with Rachel. Am I God, he asked. He's the one who has kept you from having children. Then Rachel told him, take my maid, Bella, and sleep with her. She will bear children for me. And through her, I will have a family too. So Rachel gave her servant, Bella, to Jacob as a wife, and he slept with her. Bella, Bella became pregnant and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, for she said, God has vindicated, her, vindicated me. He has heard my request and give me a son. Then Bella became pregnant again and gave Jacob a second son. Rachel named him Naphtali, for she said, I have struggled hard with my sister and I'm winning. If you recognize this as God's holy word, type in the comments, amen. Marissa recognized in the arena of the word and she types, amen. Also, Michael recognized in the reading of the word and he types, amen. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. So the guys, let's look at the Life Application Study Bible and see what it tells us and what, it, what information it gives us. So then we'll get more information from Marissa and from the interpretation of this passage, okay? In verse 30, I mean, in verse three, we see each of the three great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had wives who had difficulty conceiving children. It is interesting to note how each man reacted to his wife's um, predicament. Abraham had relations with Sarah's servant in order to have his own child, thus introducing bitter, bitterness and jealousy into his family. Isaac, by contrast, prayed to God when his wife was barren. God eventually answered his prayer and Rebecca had twin sons. Jacob, however, followed his grandfather example and had children by his wife's servant, leading to sad and sometimes bitter consequences. Uh, it goes on and says that Rachel and Leah were locked in a cruel contest in their race to have more children. They both gave their servants to Jacob as concubines. Jacob would have been wise to refuse, even though this was accepted custom of the day. The fact that a custom is socially acceptable, acceptable does not mean it is wise or right. You will be spared much heartbreak if you look at the potential consequences to you or others of, of your actions. Are you doing anything now that might cause future problems? We see that. And Brian is recognized in the reading of the scriptures and he types amen as well. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so with that being said, we looked at the Life Application Study Bible. So now let's go to Marissa's scriptures. You looked at the cross-reference. We looked at the cross-reference, got a, got a good understanding of what we're talking about. You heard my introduction. So now let's look at some scriptures that support what, um, what we're going to be looking at. If we go over to first starting off with Genesis chapter 11, verse 30. Genesis chapter 11, verse 30 tells us this. But Sarah was unable to become pregnant and had no children. We go to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 21 tells us this. Then you will think to yourself, who has given me all these descendants? For most of my children were killed and the rest were carried away into exile. I was left here all alone. Where did all these people come from? Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? We see that if we go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse one, Isaiah chapter 54, verse one, sing, O childless woman, you who have never given birth, 
break into loud and joyful song. O Jerusalem, you have never been in labor, for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives, lives with her husband, says the Lord. If we go to Genesis chapter 16, verse 4, Genesis chapter 16, verse 4 tells us what? So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarah, with contempt. You see that? If we go to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 18, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 18. While your wife is living, do not marry her sister and have sexual relations with her, for they would be rivals. If we jump over to Genesis chapter 50, verse 19, Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 tells us what? But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35 tells us what? It will take revenge. I will pay them back. In due time, their feet will slip. Their day of disaster will arrive and their destiny will be overtaken, will overtake them. If we go to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 7. Second Kings chapter five, verse seven says, when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, this man sends me a, a leper to heal. Am I God that I can give life and take it away? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. We go to Genesis chapter 16, verses two to four. Genesis chapter 16, verse 2 to 4 says, So Sarah said to Abram, Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I have so I perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed uh, with Sarah's proposal. So Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to, to treat her mistress, Sarah, with contempt. Let's go to Psalms chapter 35, verse 24. Psalms chapter 35, verse 24. And it tells us, declare, declare me not guilty, O, God, o Lord, my God. For you give justice. Don't let my enemies laugh about me in my trouble, in my troubles. Okay, Michael. So now, guys, let's go over to Psalms chapter 43, verse 1. Psalms chapter 43, verse 1, and it says, Declare me, O innocent, declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. If we look at Genesis chapter 21, verse 2. Genesis chapter 21, verse 2 says, She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God has said it would. So we know that God controls who has children or not, right? Ruth chapter four, verse 13, 13, Ruth chapter four, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. Michael says, amen. Also, if we go to first Samuel chapter one, verse 20. First Samuel chapter one, verse 20 says, and in due time, she, get, she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I ask the Lord for him. If we go to Genesis chapter 46, verse 23, Genesis chapter 46, verse 23 tells us what? The son of Dan was Hisham. 
if we go over to Genesis chapter 49, verse 16, Genesis chapter 49, verse 16 to 17, and it reads, Dan will govern his people like any other tribe in Israel. Dan will be a snake beside the road, a poisonous viper along the path that bites the horse's hooves. So its rider is thrown off. See that? If we go to Numbers chapter 26, verse 42 to 43. Numbers chapter 26, verses 42 to 43, and it reads, These were the clan descended from the son of Dan, the Shahumites clan, named after their ancestor, Shahum, Shaham. Um, these were the Shahamites clan of Dan their registered their their registered troops numbered in six numbered 64,400 if we go to Joshua chapter 19 verses 40 to 48 Joshua chapter 19 verses 40 to 48 the seventh allotment of the land went to the clan of the tribe of Dan the land act um allocated as their homeland, including the following towns, Zora, Eshetal, Irshemesh, Shalabim, Shalalabim, Ajalan, Ithilan, Ilan, Timnim, Ekron, Elkeke, El, 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 Kiki, Gibbethan, Balaam, Jehud, Benarak, Gathrimon, Megarkin, Rakin, and the territory across from Jopa. If we go to Judges chapter, let's see, Jud, what is it, Judges? Judges chapter 13, verse 2. Judges chapter 13, verse 2 tells us what in those days a man named Mo mona from the tribe of dan lived in the town of zora his wife was unable to become pregnant and they had no children okay also if we look at judges chapter 18 verse 2 judges chapter 18 verse 2 and it reads so the men of Dan chose from their clan five capable warriors from the town of Zor and Eshetal to scout out the land for them to settle in. When these warriors arrived in the hill country of Ephraim, they became they they came to Micah house and spent the night there. I don't think I was supposed to go that far. Maybe I should have. Okay. Yeah, no, I did go right. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 15 jeremiah chapter 4 verse 15 says your destruction has been announced from dan and the hill country of ephraim we see that if we go to jeremiah chapter 8 verse 16 jeremiah chapter 8 verse 16 tells us what the snorting of the enemy war horses can be heard all the way from the land of dan in the north the the name the gnawing of their stallions make the whole land tremble. They are coming to devour our devour the land and everything in it, cities and the people alike. If we go to Ezekiel chapter forty eight verse one. Ezekiel chapter forty eight verse one. Here is the list of the tribes of Israel and the territory each is, is to receive. The territory of Dan is in the extreme north. Its boundaries line follows the Hethlon road to the Lebo, Lebo Hamath and then runs on the Hazar, Hazar, Hazarinan on the border of Damascus with the Hamath the, to the north. Dan's territory extends all the way across the land of Israel from east to west. We see that. And let's go to Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. 
Genesis chapter 32, verse 28 tells us what? Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. If we go to Marissa, I'm not sure what his chapter 12, verse 3 to 4, what that is, but his HIS 12, chapter 3, verse 4. And then let's go to, let's continue moving on. Genesis chapter 35, verses 25. Genesis chapter 35, verse 25 says this. The son of Bella, Rachel's servant, were, were Dan and Naphtali. Yes, Marissa, thank you very much for the wonderful um, scriptures. Awesome. Michael says, I have I have to leave and come back. Okay. And Marissa says, I think Michael says, amen. And he says, thank you, Marissa, for the wonderful verses. You are so welcome. Um, okay, guys. So now let's go back to, now we're ready for the interpretation. Now we're going to give you some more information to be, so you can better understand how to interpret and what, what we get from this, these messages. Okay. Let's get it. We've read. So let me, let me do a recap. Oh, it was. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Could it be Hosea? Hosea? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got you. Let's go to Hosea chapter 12 verses three to four. Hosea chapter 12, verses three to four says, even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother. When he became a man, he even fought with God. Yes, he wrestled with the angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face and God spoke to him. You see that? Thank you, Marissa, for the, for the amazing scriptures. So now let's go back. Now, so guys, we looked at we looked at my cross references. We looked at the scriptures from Marissa that she gave us. We've read the scriptures. You got an introductory into the scriptures of what I told you what to be looking at. So now we now we just have to go through the interpretation phase of this. So let's get to it. Marissa, it's okay. Um, envy, jealousy. That's what we see here. There was envy and jealousy in the home, but God overruled. This tension was seen in Rachel. Rachel was most likely a proud and vain woman. She was beautiful, and her beauty had probably made her somewhat haughty, conceited, condescending, and self-sufficient. Growing up, she has certainly be been aware that boys and men paid more attention to her than to most others. Even Jacob had worked seven long years, hard long years, just to have her hand in marriage. And then after that, he had, he had, he had been deceived into marrying Leah. He committed, he was committed to work another seven years for her. Everyone in the city knew this. She was bound to feel proud and conceit and to, the, to feel anger towards Leah for having deceived Jacob into marrying her. Guys, Rachel would, would naturally flaunt Jacob, Jacob's love before Leah because of her anger. This was possibly, this was possibly the reason God had made her barren. Rachel had to learn to walk in the spirit of humility, to put her trust in God, not in her own beauty and her ability to get the attention and the help of the help of men when she needed help. There would be, as there always is for all of us, situations where only God could help her. The help, the help of man would be useless. This Rachel had to learn. And God was teaching her through her being a, being unable to have children. He was definitely teaching her. We also see
Also, guys, now note the tension that Rachel caused within her family in verses 1 to 4. Okay? So let's look at verses 1 to 4. Guys, she was jealous of Leah's ability to have children. In that day, the highest privilege and honor bestowed upon a woman was that of bearing children. The pain of being childless was keenly felt by a woman. They were thought to be disfavored by God if they didn't have children. This partly explained why Jacob began to turn more towards Leah. And Rachel, of course, felt all this. The, goss the gossip about her being childless, about Jacob now turning more to Leah. The day came when she would take the situation no more. Her envy got the best of her, and she launched into an outburst against her husband, Jacob. Give me a child or else I'll die. That's what she says in verse one. We go deeper. Us going deeper is this. This angered Jacob. He stuck. He struck back at Rachel. The problem was not him. It was her. Her relationship with God. God was not giving her children because she was not right with God. But Rachel was not listening nor confessing that the faults of her of her of hers. She wasn't confessing her faults. That she was not living for God like she should have been. Guys, in, in, in a desperation, she sinned. She told Jacob to take her maidservant as a concubine and go in to her. In verses three, we see that. But notice this. She declared that the children would be legally hers. That's what she declared. Also, if we go down a little bit. Now notice what Jacob did. He he gave in to Rachel. He should not have, but you know that he's he's a little timid, guys. Y'all know Jacob is a little timid. He should have been courageous and refused to sin. He should have suggested that they take the matter to God together, that they pray and trust God to give her children. But no, Jacob fell into his sin yet again. He gave in to his wife just as he he had given into his mother's year his mother years ago before and just as he had given into laban and in, and mary and leah he again ignored god's institution of marriage one man for one woman rachel's sin of envy and jealousy was leading her husband into sin another adam and eve sin was being added to to sin within a family but God overruled it. God overruled and gave children to the maid servant Bella. Rachel named the child Dan, which means judge and vindicated. Note two facts about this though. The first fact is this, Rachel recognized that God had given the child. This shows some true belief in God, but not the level of trust shown by Leah though. The name Rachel used for God is Elohim, the name that stresses God as a source of creation and life. She was not yet confessing God as Yahweh, the God of salvation and redemption. But second, Rachel was saying that God had judged her before by giving, giving her no children, but now he was vindicating her to be worthy of children. But check this out. This was not true. This was not true. She was still being self-sufficient, boasting in herself, declaring that she herself had gained favor with God, that she was now in God's will. <laughs> she created the baby. This was just not so. Rachel has sinned and was still sinning. Beyond that, let me explain. She was sinning by being so prideful and self-sufficient. She was sinning by encouraging Im immorality, encouraging her husband to lie with with her maidservant. She was sinning by she was sinning by refusing to pray and trust God for children. 
That's what she was doing. If we go deeper than if we go deeper, God overruled it again and gave another child through the maid servant Bella. Rachel named this this son Nephateli. So we let's go down. So we see that in verse 8. Nephateli, right? Rachel named him Nephateli, which means struggling, wrestling. Notice the carnal, fleshly nature of Rachel here. She named the child in a in honor of a of her struggle with Leah, her struggle to please Jacob and to secure his favor. Rachel's envy seemed to reach a peak by declaring that she had finally won the struggle with Leah. She was the one who was now pleasing Jacob. Yah, the lessons that we learn, the lesson and the message is here. There is no doubt that envy and jealousy can rip a couple apart. They cause outbursts and heated arguments. A home suffers terrible pain and harm when envy and jealousy exist in it. When a husband or wife launch, launch into an outburst of envy and jealousy, think what a husband, a wife, a child suffer. They suffer of hurt, pain, abuse. There is no doubt unhappiness. When, they, when, these, when these things are all there, all you can see is division. Now, everybody or that person is insecure about themselves. You see of nothing but always seeing disturbance within that family. We start seeing the children or that person start going through emotional problems in their household and in their, in their life. Sometimes you see fear. And sometimes you'll see anger. But the last two are more important. You start to see the loss of love and that loss of respect. Let's look at some scripture that support what I'm saying. If we take a look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 tells us this. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in its in the bones. Jealousy, I, I don't know how people could be jealous. Well, I'm I'm not jealous. I'm not a jealous person. I've never been, but I like that's just a kid. Like you said, it's a cancer. It spreads everywhere. Proverbs chapter twenty three, verse seventeen. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17 tells us, do not envy sinners. Do not, don't ever envy a sinner, but always continue to fear the Lord. Always continue to fear the Lord. The Life Application Study Bible explains it perfectly. How easy is it to envy those who, who get ahead of unhampered by moral responsibility? For a time, they do seem to prosper without paying any attention to what God wants. But they have no real future. They have no real future. To those who follow him, God promises a hope and a wonderful future, even if it isn't achieved in this life. That's what I'm talking about. Marissa says, amen. If we take out take take a look at Romans chapter 13 verse 13. Romans chapter 13 verse 13 says because we belong to the, we, we belong to the day we must live decent lives for all to see. Do not participate in darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. It tells us that Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 and it tells us this. Guys, 
Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. Our society confuses love and lust. Unlike lust, God, God kind of love is directed outward towards others, not inward toward our, towards, our, towards ourselves. It utterly unselfish. It's utterly, it's utterly unselfish. This kind of love goes against our natural inclination. It is impossible to have this love unless God helps us, helps us set aside our own natural desires so that we can love and not expect anything in return. Thus, the more we become like Christ, the more love we will show to others. Marissa says, amen. Michael says, amen. The last two. Let's go over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26 says this. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. The Life Application Study Bible says this perfectly. Everyone needs a certain amount of approval from others, but those who go out of, of their way to secure honor or to win popularity becomes conceited and show that they are not following the Holy Spirit's leading. Those who look to God for approval won't need to envy others because we are God's sons and daughters we have his Holy Spirit as the loving guarantee of his approval. Seek to please God and the approval of others won't seem so important at all. We see that. And the last scripture is this. If we look at James chapter 3, verse 14. James chapter 3. James, James is, the, is the book of obedience. James chapter 3, verse 14. And it says, but if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. What does this mean? Let, let's go to 15 as well. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. And demonic. Let's look at the Life Application Study Bible, what it tells us. Bitter jealousy and selfish ambitions are inspired by the devil. It is easy for us to be drawn into wrong desires by pressure of society and sometimes even by well-meaning Christians. By listening to the advice, assert yourself, go for it, set high goals. We can be drawn into greed and destructive competitiveness. Seeking God's wisdom delivers us from the need to compare ourselves to others and to want what they have. Amen. Marissa, Marissa Michael says, amen. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, it's not good. Now we know envy and jealousy is a sinful practice. If you found this, this live stream enlightening and want to continue to grow in your understanding of the Bible, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Help a brother out. Get to you to get to 8,000. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on future studies. Also, if you know someone who could benefit from these teachings, please share this video with them. Your support helps us to continue this ministry and reach more people with the word of God. Thank you for being a part of our community and stay blessed and keep the faith. Tomorrow we're going to dive into tomorrow we're going to dive into worldliness. Worldliness and compromise. When we and we know I I'm we I, worldliness and compromise. We cannot be worldliness and we can't compromise. There was the worldly compromise, but God overruled it. Leah was the person at fault now. Now we see what happened to Leah worldliness and compromise maybe she started arguing oh i see what it is i see what it is we pretty much what we pretty much see is um backsliding worldliness 
and gossip. That's what I see. That's in Genesis chapter 30, verses 9 to 13. That's what we'll be diving into. Um, let's do our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and thy glory forever and ever. And we all say, Amen. Bear with me. I thought Marissa didn't have a prayer today. But I have it here. Bear with me, guys. You set it up. Okay, got Marissa's prayer ready. Um, ungodliness, yes. Marissa says ungodliness. Um, that's good. That's 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 confirmation. That means you're on the right path. That's that's good. As God speaking to you, Brian. Yes. That's God speaking to you. He's saying he he guiding you. That's what that is. That's good, bro. That's really good. I'm telling you, that's really good. He's guiding you. He's showing you. Yes, sir. You learning. Now you're getting in the midst of it. Now you now you seeing now you seeing god move that's called seeing god move y'all ready to do this lord's prayer we'll talk about it right after marissa's prayer marissa's prayer says this good night everyone god bless you and god bless your family we love and appreciate you all showing your support as we all dive into the many messages and lessons from god through the bible we hope you all have a wonderfully blessed night and an equally wonderfully blessed day tomorrow may both glorify and serve god his will way word and purpose how can we pray for you do not hesitate to post your prayer request in the chat box so we can pray for you we will see you all here tomorrow night every night i mean tomorrow night and every night at 5 p.m eastern standard time unless it is posted or stated otherwise yahweh Siniku. thank you for listening and hearing our prayer we come before you as humble servants with hearts full of thanks and gratitude. We come asking you to talk to us while we sit here and listen to you. Talk to us and draw near us. We are listening with open hearts and minds and attentive ears. Speak to our spirits, souls, and hearts. We thank you for your guidance and wisdom as we go about each day. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Even when we know we are so, un so we are so understanding of your love and mercy, yet you show us you show us it. Thank you for this day and the blessings you have given us with it. Thank you for guiding us to your purpose in our lives. Thank you for blessing us with another wonderful night of fellowship with the family we have grown into through it. Thank you for giving us hope love joy peace and patience we come asking with sincere humble hearts asking for forgiveness of our sins yahweh said you said in scriptures you will fight the battle for us all we have to do is still be still 
We must we trust you, Father, and understand your will and purpose in our life. You say that you say that there is only there's only there is only one way to you, and that is through the Son Jesus Christ, our Jesus Christ, our Savior. We know we are saved through the salvation given to us from Jesus. We say whatever whatever we ask for in prayer and supplication will be provided. Provided. We know and thank thank you for providing us with everything we need and not what we want. We declare all of our needs will be met according to you. We declare the blood of our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who suffered and was crucified on the cross to pay the debt of our sins so we can have salvation given by him over everyone here in the fellowship, those watching on replay, their homes, their families, their jobs, their children, over us, our homes, our family, our jobs, and our children, in Jesus' name. We declare that all curses, ties, and bonds all the way to our earliest ancestors, Adam and Eve, are broken in the name of Jesus. We declare blessings upon everyone here. We declare we will see spiritual and physical growth in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray for those who persecute, mockery, and judge us. We pray for those who are lost, broken, and uncertain, and seeking a purpose in life. Lead them in the direction of someone who can fill, fill them with the spiritual nourishment they need and show them they have a purpose in life. We pray for those who are sick and dealing with the health issues. We pray for healing over them. We thank you for your promises to all of us believers. Thank you for being our strong rock and fortress, our tower and refuge, whom we can come running to. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in us and lead us in the way of everlasting. We want to pray like Nehemiah, serve like Martha, believe like Mary, educate like Paul, build like Noah, and have faith so strong like Abraham and love like Jesus. We, we love you, Yahweh, Siddiqu, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We give you all credit, praise, glory, gratitude, and thanks for whom it belongs to, forever on this earth and forevermore in the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for hearing and listening to, to and answering our prayers according to your will and not ours. For your will shall be done and not ours, and your timing is right and just. We lay everything down in your hands and submit ourselves to you. Thank you, Father. Just thank you. And we love you. In Jesus' mighty, strong, powerful name we pray. Amen. In Psalms chapter 20, it says, I have, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's get to the comments. Let's see who let's see who who put some comments up. I know Brian put some comments up before. Um, Marissa says, "Oh, I think I read this already. I think I did." Thank you, everyone, for another wonderful study. I did not. I can't wait to see everyone back here tomorrow. God bless you and protect you. Michael says, thank you, brothers and sisters, for another wonderful fellowship. And God bless you and your family. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, Michael says, can't wait for tomorrow. Wonderful fellowship. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Marissa says, ungodly. Also, Marissa says, saying in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray brian make sure you type out your last thoughts i think i don't know if you did or not but make sure you type out your last what you want to say also um brian says it is odd but when i read part of genesis last week and now i watched the movie now we're talking and reading the bible about it yes sir all happening this week 
and last week. That's God talking to you. That's God guiding you. He know He know where you're gonna be. That's right. He's guiding. He's saying you're on the right path. You you doing what I'm you doing what I'm telling you. Um, Marissa says, can't wait. I need patience with this with this new school system for the kids. Day three tomorrow with the kids, and I don't have a clue what the kids were learning. Had to order three new laptops for the kids. I definitely need patience to deal with this school year. Yes, you do, Marissa. And I, I, I ask God to give you the strength, the wisdom, and the patience to be able to endure with those kids in that school. Oh, to be a stay-at-home mom is hard. Michael says, OP, it, is it okay if I call you in a bit? Yeah, that's fine. Brian says, sure thing. So again, like I said, tomorrow we're going to be diving into Genesis chapter 30, verses 9 to 13, worldliness and compromise. We're going to see some jealousy, backsliding, um, worldliness. We're going to get a better understanding of what worldliness is. So that's what we're going to be diving into. We have went through all, I've given you all of the information that you could possibly extract messages and lessons out of this, out of these scriptures to, today. Um, make sure you, um, if you have TikTok, make sure you go over to TikTok and um, you follow me on TikTok. I do quick Bible readings. I mean, I, I do quick Bible studies. I'm going to be doing that every day on TikTok every, for every lesson that we're learning. So make sure you go over to TikTok, make sure you are um, following me over there. So you get the quick ones and um, Marissa says, thank you, OP. You are so welcome, Marissa. And Marissa says, kids said they love you all and God bless you and God bless your family. We love you too, kids. Thank you very much for being here. Have fun at school tomorrow. Don't be too much on your mother. Don't give your mother too much. And the final word is from Brian. He says, thank you, Lord, first for letting us be here another day, hearing your word from the Bible and letting us wake up another day. Then I thank you guys for hearing the words that are in the Bible and for being here and for being here. Great. Look at you, Brian. You getting you getting better at it. You getting now you know you know what you putting together, bro. Now you get you getting better at it. That's what I'm talking about. Look at look at Brian. He, he's gonna be you gonna be bruh. Amen. That's right. Amen, Brian. Brian getting good at it. Look at you. thank you, Lord. And he what you growing, bro, and you growing quick. You putting them together. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Brian doing his thing. I had, to, I had to type an amen in there. So I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank Marissa. Most of, I want to thank Marissa. I want to thank um, Brian. I want to thank, um, how can I forget his name? How? Why am I drawing a blank? Michael, thank you. I, Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Thank you, people that's watching me on replay. Thank you for the people that was just here and that that left and bounced out. Thank you very much. I want to I want to show my appreciation. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to God's word. That is all that matters. I will see you guys all here tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you and God bless your family.